I've tested a lot of printers lately, but the Anycubic Cobra S1 with its Ace Pro really caught me off guard in a good way. It's a $599 multicolor printer with a built-in filament dryer, some clever design choices, and a few features that even Bamboo Lab doesn't have. Today, I'll show you where it shines, where it falls short, and whether it's worth it to pick this thing up. And I'll even do some small comparisons to Bamboo Lab. Let's get into it. Anycubic reached out and sent over their Cobra S1 so I could check it out and review. Now I got the combo kit here, which is the S1 with the Ace Pro. Now they do have an option where if you could get a second Ace Pro and you could do up to eight color printing, which would be kind of cool. Now this isn't a sponsored review. These are just going to be my full honest impressions and my time with this printer so far. Now when this thing first showed up, it was packed very well and everything was cleverly stored inside the machine, which is kind of typical nowadays. This does have plastic panels, which kind of makes it feel a little less premium, but that actually might be smarter. I've seen way too many Reddit posts of cracked bamboo windows or LU3 carbons with showing up with cracked glass everywhere. This avoids that and that's probably a good idea. The build volume of the S1 Cobra is 250 by 250 by 250 millimeters, which is pretty comparable to the Elegoo Centauri Carbon or the Bamboo Lab printers, which are 256 cubed. The hot end of this printer will go up to 320 degrees Celsius, and the bed will reach up to 120 degrees Celsius. The one con that I feel about this is that the nozzle isn't hardened, which is kind of a downside in my opinion. You can't do any carbon fiber, glass fiber, or anything that's abrasive enough, like even glow-in-the-dark filament, you technically shouldn't run through this. Some of the cool specs off the top is it does have auto bed leveling and auto Z offset. There is a tool free hot end removal, which makes for easy maintenance. This does have a 4.3 inch touchscreen, which I found to be quite responsive actually. It's been a nice usable screen. And the cool thing is, is it does pivot like this. So if you wanted to have it flat, you can, but most of the time I'm just gonna be keeping mine up just like that. Anycubic does claim that this will print quite quietly at 44 decibels. Some other quick features, you know, it's got the typical power loss resume, but there is a supposed belt tension monitor, which I can't really find too much info on it, but it sounds cool. I mean, let's talk about the Ace Pro multicolor system real quick. This thing is actually quite cool. It's got a lot of nice features that aren't in the Bamboo Lab printers. First and foremost is that it has a filament dryer built in, which is a really nifty feature. Something that's unique about the Ace Pro is that it has four PTF tubes that come out of the back and it meets up with the joiner on the back of the printer. Now, where that's different from say the Bamboo Lab AMS is that joiner is typically inside the AMS. So if you had a filament breakage or something like that inside, it was really hard to fix. Not hard, but just time consuming because you have to take everything out, undo a few screws and get to the bottom. It's, it's a hassle to say the least. So to see that they have everything external is kind of nice. Another nice feature of the Ace Pro is that on the inside, there are these fins. And what these do is they, they kind of just help keep the rolls of filament from going all over the place. And it keeps everything where it needs to be. Now, sometimes if you have lighter spools in the Bamboo Lab AMS, it can kind of get tossed around and it doesn't load properly. This is a really nice idea and I'd like to see it on more products. Now, I did mention before that this can be connected up to another one of these. So that way you could run up to eight color prints. That's more than I would typically do because I find that to be kind of wasteful. And like I mentioned previously, this does have a built-in dryer. Now that is a huge feature for this because there is nothing like that that I know of from any other brand. Sunlu just came out with a AMS attachment so you could basically turn your AMS into a heater. This is cool because it's built in and it's built into the software as well. One thing I thought was really cool is in the software, you could tell it to start printing after the drying cycle has finished. If for instance, like my PETG high flow from Bamboo Lab, I need to dry that for eight hours. Now I could load this up full of all brand new filament and set it to dry. Once it's done drying, it'll automatically start printing. Now you don't just have that option. You can also tell it to dry while you print, which is gonna be nice for any more exotic materials, which you kind of can't print on this. Now I did try out the multicolor system just a little bit to get an idea on how how well it works. It seems to swap colors fairly smoothly. Uh, it does seem the retraction of the filament is a bit slow. This also comes back to how they run the PTFE tubes out the back. What's a really cool feature is when you're doing the multicolor printing, 
it doesn't have to rewind the filament nearly as much as say the Bamboo Lab AMS. It only really needs to pull the filament behind the splitter a little bit so that way it can make room for the new filament. Now it's, it's kind of cool because realistically it's only needing to pull the filament back to about right here rather than all the way into the machine like it does on the Bamboo Labs. While we're back here, let's talk about what's on the back of the machine. We have our little poop chute right here, which I still need to print a bucket to gather all the poop that comes out of here. Back here, we have our power cord, our on off switch. Like I said before, we have our filament buffer. We have a couple cables running from the Ace Pro to the printer. On the back of the Ace Pro, it does require its own power. You have your four PTFE tubes that come out the back with their own buffers. You can kind of pull on them and they'll actually come out a little bit. We have another connector right here if you wanted to run another Ace Pro. Since this is also a filament dryer, there is a lock on the Ace Pro so you can slide it over and now it won't open. If you wanna open it, you just slide it back over and there we go. The Cobra S1 does require its own slicer and you have to use the Anycubic Slicer Next, which essentially is just a skinned version of Orca Slicer. If you're used to using the Bamboo Studio or the Orca Slicer, super easy to get used to using this. Now I really wish I could use the Orca Slicer for this. I haven't really put too much effort into getting it to work, but it does seem like it is a possibility and that maybe they're working on it. I could be wrong. Now I've only used the Anycubic slicer for this and it's, it works well. There's no issues with it. I do wish there was more filament profiles in there. I wanted to test the machine using the Sunlu EZPA, but because there was no built-in profiles, I wasn't able to get it to work properly. This does operate very similar to how Bamboo Lab runs with their cloud service. You can remotely view everything that's going on with the printer on your phone or on the computer remotely. You don't even have to be on the same network. That is a nice feature. However, I know some people have issues with kind of that cloud situation. So you do have the option to run this in a LAN mode if you want. Personally, I don't mind using the cloud stuff because when I'm at work, I can remotely send stuff to print here, which has been super helpful. What's also nice is when you have that set up, you do get notifications on your phone when there's a failure, a spaghetti issue, or a completed print. And like I said before, there is a privacy trade-off, but that's completely your call with this. You can use the cloud service or you can use the LAN functionality. But either way, you're pretty well situated. Andy Cubic did send over a couple rolls of filament that I could test with. This is their black PLA. One really cool feature about this also is there is RFID tags on these rolls of filament. So they will automatically be recognized in the Ace Pro, which is a really nice feature. So they sent over this one and they also sent over a roll of their gray PETG. I wanted to make sure I had some functional prints in here for testing. This is a headphone holder that turned out really good. It looks awesome. This is printed in their black PLA. Did have a little bit of an issue right here with some overhangs, but overall, I think it did quite well. Next up, I printed out this little basket here, which is gonna be a nice test to see how the honeycomb design was going to survive. Sometimes these don't print very well if the machine's not cooling properly, but overall this printed out great. And I'll have links down to everything I printed in the description below. On the printer itself, this was a preloaded file. It's just a little shark flexi. This printed out nicely as I would expect it to. There was also another little shark here, which looks like to be like a bottle opener. Uh, I will have to test to see if this actually works. I'm not sure if plastic would survive. I printed out this little stand right here for my Ubiquiti switch that I just picked up. So that way it can stand vertically. This printed nice and super simple. I mean, it, it, if it couldn't print this, I think we'd have some bigger questions at hand. Next up, I've tried printing this a couple times, but I found that the file had some issues. Now, this is a Necronomicon box, if you're familiar with the Evil Dead movies. The top part printed great. I mean, look at that. It looks awesome. However, this file is not particularly polished because it said no supports needed and well, yeah. They definitely needed something on the bottom because it's it basically tried to do these huge runs of just no support right here and it just printed all jacked up. And unfortunately, I had another issue with this where this was not oriented on the file properly. So rather than it being flat, it was kind of crooked. 
It caused this print to fail a couple times, but that was a good thing because that means I got to test the spaghetti detection. We'll get to that here in just a little bit. Next up, I printed this right here, which is a very functional design, which is kind of cool. It doesn't work on my bike like I hoped it would, but this allows you to set a phone or a tablet on your handlebars. This printed out great. I think I printed this in Elegoo's Rapid PETG. I could be wrong, but I can't honestly remember. I did do these really cute, flexible narwhals to test the multicolor functionality of this. It did great. I definitely don't see any issues here. There's not a ton of swaps on here. I printed quite a bit, just about a full build plate full of these. That's all the excess poop that came from it. So if you are doing multicolor prints, you're still gonna have a bunch of poop from this. Next up, I wanted to test out the PETG that they sent over and I found this really cool design over on Maker World, if I recall right. But essentially what it is, it's essentially a dog poop picker upper. It allows you to tie on a doggy poop bag and scoop it up. And this thing printed great. Considering that it printed just like this, I think it did an excellent job. I also printed out these little hooks here. This printed on the AnyCubic Cobra S1 and it printed beautifully. It prints just like this. So all this is essentially a test for seeing how well the cooling is. Unfortunately, this was printed on my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and it completely failed. I have to figure out what's going on with that thing because it has not been able to print these for a bit. And if you look at the difference, it's uh, it's pretty substantial. Here is another quick little multicolor print that I did. It's a super simple one. So there's only one filament change going from the black to the white, but it printed out really nicely. And I printed this in ABS and it printed great. It The printer is able to handle the ABS without any issues. Now this printer does have spaghetti detection and it actually worked both times the Necronomicon box failed. So that was really nice to see that it works really well. And during all the testing, I have not had any false positives, which is a nice thing to see. Sometimes those can be really annoying when you're trying to get a job done. Now that's not to say that there won't be false positives. I think that's gonna happen no matter any system that we use. The printer does come with a magnetic PEI double-sided plate, which is really nice to see. I like these textured build plates a lot for some of my products that I print. It being double-sided is nice. I do like that only one side has the silk screening on it. The other side is just blank. Because typically what I'll do is I will just use the heck out of one side until it's dead and then I'll flip it over. Now, not being able to differentiate which side is which when I go to clean it and I have my oils all over the backside and I put it in the printer and it's the wrong side and my print fails, it's kind of annoying. So having some kind of differentiator on knowing what the front and the back is, is a nice thing. Now with this being able to dry filament so easily in the Ace Pro, I do have a concern that maybe I could be overthinking, but with it drying, every single roll in there, I feel like you're gonna over dry some of your filament by doing it. It's a concern of mine that we could potentially be over drying some of our filament inadvertently. The printer does have a built-in camera for remote viewing as well as time lapses. It is only a 480p camera, so don't expect any high quality time lapses coming off of this. Now, a nice thing about the camera is that it does have a higher refresh rate than say the Bamboo Lab A1 or the A1 Mini, the P1P, P1S. You can actually see what's going on in here and that's really nice. The frame rate on the camera is just fine. It works perfectly well. You can see what's going on inside. It's not refreshing super Super fast, but it's definitely refreshing quick enough that you can see what's going on on the inside. Now, I do have a small issue with where they put the flash drive connector here, the USB port. It's on the side. Let's just say this has not fared very well. As you can see, it is very bent. Now, this still works perfectly fine, but with it being here on the side, it's just gotten hit enough times that it's gonna break very soon. One thing I did like to see is the built-in light of this printer is very good. Looking through the plastic door, you can see inside the printer just fine. And if we open it up, you can see it's nice and bright in here. I love that. Another small minor feature is they left a little gap right here. You can easily scoop out your trash and make it so easy to get it out. There's no lip here, so it's super easy to get everything out. And I, I, I love that. I wish other printers would do that. Now, who is this printer for? 
Well, it's a great entry into 3D printing. This is a very capable machine and it has a lot of really good features. I do wish it had a hardened steel nozzle out of the box because I couldn't test using any more exotic filaments like PACF or PA612CF, stuff like that because it didn't have a hardened nozzle. One thing that this does have going for is it's more of a bamboo-like experience where you do have the cloud functionality, which is a huge plus for myself because I love being able to remotely monitor and send prints while I'm at work to all my printers at home. The multi, if this does have multi-color support, multi-material support, I love that about this printer. I love that they have a dryer built into the Ace Pro. I think that is an awesome feature. You know, the slicer is pretty easy, especially if you're a beginner. If you are using any cubic filament only, the fact that they have the RFID tag in here is really nice. One quick note about that is I have loaded some bamboo lab filament in here that has the RFIDs as well. And it has hung the machine up just a little bit in trying to determine what that filament was. And it kind of delays the process of me manually putting in whatever the filament was. It's kind of annoying, but I understand why it's happening. It's trying to read it and it can't, but it knows that there's an RFID tag there. So it's really hard to say who this is for. Now, like I said, it's got great features. Now, do I recommend it? Yeah, I think so. Given the, the price point that this comes in at, as it stands, it's $599 right now. Now, if you wanted the Cobra S1 without the Ace Pro, then you're looking at $449. Now, realistically, for an extra $150, bucks, I think I would go with the combo. Not just because of the fact that you may do multicolor or multi-material. Where these systems shine is being able to load up four of your most used filament and being able to print on demand without having to swap your filament all the time. I think that's what makes these things so special. Do I care that it does multicolor? Yeah, it's great, it's super handy, but it's not my main reason for using these kind of things. Now, if you print PETG or ABS, this thing's great. It's gonna handle anything like that. But like I said, if, if you wanna print more exotic materials that are glass fibered or carbon fiber filled, you're gonna have to find alternatives for a nozzle. I think there are some online that you can pick up that are third party. If you have any suggestions for some, let me know down in the comments below. I'd like to pick some up so I can really test this thing out with those materials. I haven't seen what mods people are doing to this. I should probably hop on Reddit and check that out because I'd love to do another video printing out mods for this thing. If you have any suggestions for some, let me know down in the comments below. If you wanna see another great printer that's comparable to this at even a lower price point, you should check out this video right here of the Elegoo Centauri Carbon because I think it's a pretty good competitor to this, but I might just have to do another video of a head-to-head. -head. Let me know.